so yeah, thank you for the opportunity to present today. I'm going to talk to you about a research project that we did with Gypsy, Traveller and Roma people in the UK to identify interventions to enable them to better access childhood and adult immunisation services. And as a brief aside, the image that you see here is the international flag of the Romani or uh, Gypsy people. The blue and green is heaven and earth, and the spoked wheel represents their travelling tradition. Okay, so Gypsy, Travel and Roma people are defined either by their ethnicity or by their travelling lifestyle. I'm going to use the term traveller to mean all three groups today. It's estimated that there are about 360,000 travellers in the UK. Without a doubt, this is a massive underestimate. But what's important to acknowledge is that whilst the traveller communities share common lifestyle features that distinguish them from the general population, their, their beliefs and their traditions can vary considerably. We did this study uh, with six traveller communities across four UK cities, so English gypsies, Irish travellers, Slovakian and Romania, Roma, Slovakian and Romanian, Romanian Roma uh, families, and Scottish show people. And for information, the Scottish show people are not an ethnic group. They are defined solely by their nomadic and travelling lifestyle. So recurring outbreaks of vaccine-preventable diseases, particularly measles, suggest that immunisation uptake amongst traveller communities is low. Actually, we really don't know. So we have neither good data on the size of the traveller population to know who is eligible for vaccination, nor high-quality data on the proportion of the population who take up and receive vaccinations. And of course, by um, the very nature that they're travelling communities, the denominator changes frequently. Public Health England did a scoping um, exercise of immunisation services for travellers and they concluded that they're rarely based on identified need and where they do exist, they're patchy, their scope of their activities varies considerably and, um, and their capacity also. Here then are the aims of our study. So we look to identify the barriers and facilitators to immunisation uptake amongst six traveller communities. We looked for similarities and differences within and across the communities, um, differences in views and experiences of men and women, and also for different uh, vaccines. The second aim was to identify possible interventions to increase uptake, and it's that work that I'm gonna focus on today. Uh, the focus of the study was the UK Chartered Immunisation Programme and two adult uh, vaccines, so the flu vaccine and the whooping cough vaccine, which is offered to pregnant women. And here are our findings. So here are the five um, key interventions that were identified across all communities and seem to have the greatest potential for increasing immunisation uptake within those traveller communities particularly for those travellers who are settled or living on authorised sites or are housed. So this, the entire study was underpinned by the social ecological model, and that acknowledges that there are multiple levels of influence on our health, on our behaviours. These five interventions are all at the policy and institutional level. So that means they're, they're about improving services and systems to work better for travellers give you a brief moment to just look at those five interventions. For each, uh, each of those five interventions, we also have detail which is recommended to have by the Medical Research Council for, um, in the guidelines for developing complex interventions. So for each intervention, we have um, the components, mode and intensity of delivery, how those interventions might differ for different traveller communities, and also the barriers and facilitators. And you can see here an example for the cultural competence training intervention. And these, um, this detail came from the interviews that we did with travellers and service providers. How then did we do this? How did we come up with those interventions? Well, we reviewed the data from interviews with 174 travellers and 39 service providers. The service providers were a mix of frontline health professionals, immunisation providers, and also those who worked at a more strategic level. We used a process called intervention mapping, which I'll explain in a moment, 
to identify potential interventions from the interview data. We then ran workshops um, in each community and within those workshops we did a two-step process to agree a prioritised list of interventions that were seen as acceptable and feasible to the community and also to the service providers. The key thing with that was that that, that list was co-produced by the travellers and the service providers. And finally, we looked across the uh, prioritised list for all the six communities to uh, come up with the five interventions that I presented to you already. I thought I'd briefly show you the themes from the interviews uh, with travellers. So the ones in red are, were mainly barriers to immunisation. Green were facilitators and the ones in amber or orange were neutral or mixed views. Um, if you're interested in those findings, uh, we have copies of the findings with us or by, by all means, please, please email me. These are the themes, um, additional themes that the service providers offered and you can see here that the wider determinants of health are included so um, insecure housing tenure, poverty, discrimination appeared in their accounts and they often talked about policy and institutional levels um, of the social ecological model. So intervention mapping. This is um, the process that we went through for, to use the interview data to come up with the potential interventions uh, to feed into the next stage at the workshops. Intervention mapping takes you from recognising a problem or a need through to the identification of a solution. And um, here is uh, the matrix that we populated. There's one example in here, which and it's uh, an example from the interviews with the English Gypsy community in Bristol. So you can see on the left the barrier or the issue for that community. It's got a little T at the end, so it was an issue that came up um, amongst the traveller participants. The next column was the objective that we then set that the intervention would need to address. Um, you then have the target. Uh, we also included the level of the social ecological model in that column. Ideas for interventions from the community and the service providers. And then also the final column was additional ideas for interventions for that particular issue from the research team and also the wider advisory group. So that's very much based on their knowledge of the literature and their personal experience, often as practitioners or uh, working with uh, travellers. Let me just go back there. So what happened was two researchers worked independently through the matrices to come up with a list of potential interventions to take through to the workshops. So at the workshops, um, they were attended by service providers and health sorry, and travellers, and I think that was key to the process, having those people in the room together, and also having service providers there who were senior enough to potentially make a difference to take the to take the actions forward so the first step was the travelers and service providers worked independently they looked at the list of prioritized interventions that had come from the previous step and they um, they ranked them according to the potential impact they felt they could have that intervention could have on immunization uptake in their community you can see the question that they were asked to consider then they came together and we discussed those interventions in terms of their acceptability and their feasibility. And the key thing was to have a can-do ethos at the workshop. So if there was an, an intervention that was seen as potentially having great impact on the community, but there were some challenges to delivering it, those were discussed and we looked for solutions to overcome those. Okay, so in conclusion then, um, this is what I've presented today is one approach to identifying interventions to increase immunisation uptake. Importantly, they're grounded in the, in the views of the community who are receiving the interventions and also the professionals who work with those communities to, to deliver services. They're theoretically informed and they're underpinned by established methods. So I think um, we feel confident that should those interventions then be implemented, you would expect them to, Im to positively impact on immunisation uptake. Um, briefly, this is our team. Helen Bedford's also at the meeting um, here, so please do come and speak to us about the study. And as I say, we have 
uh, copies of the summaries of findings to share with you. And these are the multiple organisations who supported the study. And I'll finish there. Thank you.